Welcome to Manna from Heaven with Sharon Gaines Lee. God says to us in Philippians 4.19 that he would supply all of our needs according to his riches from heaven. Aren't you ready to eat? I am. Everything we need pertaining to life and godliness is wrapped up in our relationship with Christ Jesus. And he supplied everything we need to live this life. So come join me. Let's have a conversation and eat together. Hurry up. Don't miss out. Come on. Come on. Naomi was born and raised in the UK, but has ties to America through her mother. Her upbringing in her Christian home shaped many views early on, but came to the actual test when she first encountered a health crisis at the age of 19. The last 11 years have brought on trials and tribulations through two brain surgeries, one eye surgery, and three radiation treatments, and countless procedures, scans, and MRIs. However, her faith in God has remained and increased to greater depth. She recently turned 30, and in a recent online post, she said that she can only look back on her life with thankfulness and gratitude for what she has experienced outside of health issues, outside of health issues, including her nieces being born, traveling to new countries, and completing and completing a degree and a master. Wow. Mm -hmm. Naomi, I want to welcome you to Manna from Heaven with Sharon Gaines Lee. I am so excited that you are with me today, and I so want to hear your testimony because it will encourage so many, including myself, and encourage me when I read your testimony. So please give us what you have. Give us what God has given you because, of course, you know it wasn't just for you, but it was for those who you encountered as well, would you say? Yeah, thank you so much for having me and um, giving me the opportunity to do this. It's really just so good to always share hope and truth and what God has done in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want, I can just jump right in. <laughs> you know what? You're so cute. I love you, Naomi. So Naomi, I want to ask you a question, though. Can I ask you a couple of questions first? And please just jump in, jump in and add what you want to add to it. But my first question I want to ask you is tell me, tell me when you first encountered God in your healing journey. When did okay. you encounter? When did that click in for you? So when I... I first started getting sick when I was about 19. I was 18, but I turned 19 while this all happened. Okay. And I just noticed hearing just went in my right ear. I just completely lost it. And I started throwing up every day. And it didn't make any sense why. And I Because it wasn't was attached to anything, huh? No. And I went to doctors and I they were giving me all these tests, but they kept coming up clean. And it was frustrating because there was no link to what was going on. Mm -hmm. And during that time, it was really hard. I was getting in, in quite a dark place and getting depressed and didn't want to wake up and get out of bed in the morning because my everyday was the same. I woke up, I threw up, I couldn't keep anything down and I couldn't do anything. And so part of me is like, what's the point? You know, my everyday is this, what's the point? Mm -hmm. So, you know, my family were are amazing and several times they would always try and get me out of bed to worship and to praise God but this one particular day I just did not want to do it right. I can be very stubborn and I was like this one day I was like no so mom my mom's there my sister Emily my brother Nathaniel and they had to physically help me out of bed prop me up and my brother got his guitar out and my sister mom and brother are all singing and I'm just silent. I did not open my mouth. I just mm -hmm. didn't want to. Because you were angry at this point, would you say? I don't know if it was, it could probably be a mix of anger, frustration, and yeah, just yeah. a loss, just a yeah. complete loss of giving yeah, up, of absolutely. trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And my mom, as you know, my mom, she looked at me and she said, I pray that God speaks to you right now. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I'm literally, <laughs> I was like, no, I'm mm -hmm. not. Yeah, yeah. They continued worshiping and praying and praising. And all of a sudden, I just felt a presence next to me. Mm -hmm. And it crouched right down next to me. And God said in that moment, he said, Naomi, don't you see it's me who got you out of bed this morning? Mm -hmm. Directing it to my mother. 
-hmm. He said, don't you see it's me playing the guitar for you right now? Don't you see it's me encouraging you to worship? Mm -hmm. Why are you saying no to me? And it just hit me of like, why am I saying no to the very person, the very yeah. person that is going mm -hmm. to save me, that is going to redeem me? Everything else is at a complete loss. But God, God mm. is the one who is going to save me. And my mom knew God spoke because she looked at me and stopped them singing and, and said, what did he say to you? Mm -hmm. And I just broke down in tears and I repented that I was holding a grudge against God. For yeah, yeah. Sometimes we don't need to ask the why, but we need to ask the who. Mm -hmm. Who is going to save me? Who is going to redeem me in this situation? And so from that point on, I saw God was my ally in this. He wasn't the enemy. He wasn't the cause behind this. He was mm -hmm. the one who was going to miraculously change the situation around mm -hmm. Right. So from that moment, I I had to like pull up my bootstraps and I was like, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to do this. Let's do this together. And everything kind of changed from that point. My worship wasn't desperation, but my mm -hmm. worship was delight and yeah, praise yeah, yeah. to who God is. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a case of. So was that the moment that transition? Was that yeah. a matter of days or time or was that immediate, immediately? Uh, I would say that moment definitely got the cogs going okay. and then it was, you know, to counsel my parents of like, well, then how do I do this? And my family, and we had so many conversations and this one particular one with my oldest sister Verity, she said, what do you know that you know that you know that no one else can tell you otherwise? Hmm. And I thought about it for a while and I said, I know God I loves, loves me. Hmm. I know he loves me. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, then let's build from that and let's mm -hmm. work from that. And that foundational time was so important. And I was and mentally, I have it like part one in my head because God did so much in my heart during that time. Yeah. I visually saw it as if it was a wall uh -huh. and every brick had God or near. Did you say a war or a wall? A wall. It's my okay. British your, accent. Your British accent. <laughs> <laughs> A W A L L. Okay. Uh -huh. oh, well, right. mm -hmm. <laughs> and each brick had Naomi or God. And it was Naomi had uh relationships, but God had this. Naomi had this covered, but God had this covered. Mm -hmm. But God told me that all of that had to be brought down uh -huh. and it just be God. Mm -hmm. It just be the foundation of who he is, what he says he is, and what he's done. Mm -hmm. that had to be my only foundation so all of my own thoughts and my own ideas that were wrong had to be transformed and actually surrendered to God to say you know what so you're saying Naomi something had to be torn down before something else could be built yeah. is that what you're saying initially yeah okay okay yeah and so um I mean through his mercy he brought me through and to that place and it got to a point that I it started in March and then by August still mm -hmm. nothing had changed with my yeah. diagnosis mm -hmm. and by this point I was running on empty I was still throwing up I lost a ton of weight mm -hmm. and I just found myself praising every single moment I'd wake up I'd go throw up I'd go praise someone was over one day and I was talking to them and I was like excuse me and I had to excuse myself and you know go to the bathroom and come back and be like, you know what, but God is so good. God yeah. has given me such hope that, you know, what? despite what's going on, I know God is going to save me. Mm -hmm. And I had this supernatural strength to be able to get through each day. Yeah. It says in Psalm 23, the nearness of God is for my good. So I kept him near and I didn't leave that bubble as it were. Every moment I was sleeping or resting, I had worship music playing or healing testimonies I just filled the airwaves with just him and it so strengthened my inner woman yeah. and it goes on to say at the end of Psalm 73 my flesh and my heart may fail but God yeah. is strength and my portion forever and I really lived that and experienced that and so by the end of August I go in for a consultation mm -hmm. and um we, you know, I told them everything and 
they gave me an MRI through again another miraculous story but I had mm -hmm. an MRI and that's when they actually came into the room and said you have a brain tumor we need to operate right now okay. and they so they didn't see that initially no okay and because you would have to see that through the MRI I would presume right yeah okay because nothing I was 19 it didn't make sense I lost hearing and the throwing up and I had loads of tests but they just kept coming up clean and so um but yeah it did take a while for them to figure it out mm -hmm. yeah wow. wow 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 have you had any doubts along the way Naomi in this journey I mean from that from one transition to the other to the next transition what was your mindset set and i'm asking that because because sometimes when we give testimonies and they're great and god wants us to give testimonies but if somebody is at the beginning of what you were going through and they're saying she worship she work did you feel like worshiping naomi i mean not all the time okay but i knew i had to essentially right. i knew that it, right. it was life and death and i didn't realize the seriousness of it until i got to hospital Okay. And the actual tumor was being fed by my own blood supply, but that wasn't found out until okay. a day later when people were praying through the night that God would give them wisdom. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. Come to me, and they're like, "Something is not right." Mm -hmm. And having seen God move and operate on my behalf from such a drastic turnaround from March that year to where I was, and God directing the situation and mm -hmm. giving knowledge. I knew that he was, it, he was worthy to be praised. It was, mm -hmm. God is moving and doing something. But um, a couple of years later, I got diagnosed again with another brain tumor from mm -hmm. scan. So ever since the first one, they've been screening me head to toe every okay. year. Mm -hmm. And I found out, and I was just so numb from finding out they had another brain tumor so the other one had dissipated so i should it, it's a what happened was was that they operated which is 12 hours long right they had three surgeons doing it and my facial nerves were wrapped around the brain tumor so they had to peel them away one by one okay and it was a miracle that one they took the whole thing out and saved every nerve and so when i woke I, my whole right side of my body just basically hit a reset. Okay. And I had, I couldn't swallow. I had no muscles. Fine motor skills were gone. I couldn't walk. And I basically had to start from scratch again. Uh, and that was, it was hard, but I just had that face of like, I keep pushing in. I keep pushing in. Every fiery dart that kept getting thrown at me every trial every obstacle i was like no but god god has seen me this far yes. and yes. seen me to the end mm -hmm. and i was surrounded by so many people praying all over the world that i felt like you, you know i had a 24 hour prayer team yeah that when it was nighttime for me sleeping i knew someone was awake mm -hmm. and that was such a huge comfort knowing people were praying yeah yeah, yeah. prayer makes all the difference mm -hmm. and that i believe would also overcome uh, overcome the doubts you know right. at that particular time so um I was in hospital for five weeks and it took about a year to fully recover mm -hmm. from everything. and after that I completed my degree but it was a couple of years later during this time going through this you complete completed your after, degree afterwards after. okay yeah and then um so I found out in 2018 that I had another brain tumor. So the first one was... So this was the third one? The second one. Second one, okay. So the first one was 2011, the second 2018. Okay. And um, I, I would just remember being numb because I uh, the first one was horrible. What I had to go through. And I in my head, that's all I had as reference of what right. I had to overcome. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be in hospital for weeks. And I didn't want to have to do everything from scratch all mm -hmm. over again. Mm -hmm. So that fear and anxiety of like, I'm finally getting a chance to live and be an adult and go about life. I was 26. Yeah. But I was stopped all of a sudden and had to deal with the fact that everything was going to be turned on its head again mm -hmm. and that was it was difficult to swallow and it took me a couple of days to to really 
come to terms with it, but it was at a women's meeting when they were talking about Peter on the boat and when Jesus was on the water. Mm -hmm. And and when Jesus, uh, Peter went onto the water, like he was walking on water for some time, but then right. when he realized where he was, he started to doubt and he started to sink. And God, and that all, that part right there always fascinated me because you don't, yeah. you, when you start to drown, you, I mean, he he started to sink. So mm. was it wasn't that he sunk right away in the water? He started to. I mean, mm. it doesn't make any sense even naturally, does it? Oh, completely not. It was almost mm -hmm. like there was a moment where he could have stopped sinking. Yeah. Like there was still time given of like, that it's a crossroad, you right. know, like you're gonna reach out and grab his hand or are you going to listen to yourself and start doubting? Mm -hmm. And God really spoke to me when he said, Naomi, when I'm out of the boat, you need to be out of the boat. And when mm -hmm. I'm in the boat, you need to be in the boat with mm -hmm. me because if he's out in the storm, I need to be out with him because mm -hmm. he is a place of refuge and safety and so I, I got prayed for by these amazing women of God. And I just mm -hmm. felt like a new level of faith was mm -hmm. just being built in and being completely readjusting my structure, as it were. Mm -hmm. That it was another level of faith that I haven't experienced before. But even saying that, um, I still had doubts, you mm -hmm. know. Right, right. Difficult and Praise God, the surgery was two hours, so mm -hmm. completely different than the first one. Mm -hmm. And the recovery was very straightforward. Okay. But I was home within five days, not five weeks. Okay. Well, that's a difference. Yeah. And I was just like so overjoyed that mm -hmm. it was, everything was on track. Mm -hmm. Then I got bacterial meningitis. And after I, that? Yeah. And I had to go back into hospital mm -hmm. and, you know, one of the symptoms is throwing up and loss of it confirmed that's what it was, but I was in so much pain. Okay. I was in immense pain because I still had 14 stitches in my head and I was mm -hmm. throwing up and I was just a wreck at this point. I'm lying mm -hmm. back in hospital. I don't want to be here again. Mm -hmm. And I remember lying down looking at my mom just crying saying where has the goodness of god gone right i was like mm -hmm. what has happened mm -hmm. how am i in this situation and my mom was starting to say something but then my surgeon walks into the room and he looks at me and he comes down to i love when he said mm -hmm. Amy, what's wrong and i told him and he said okay let's get you this this and this pain relief mm -hmm. and as soon as he got me the pain relief, I was able to almost breathe again and function because the pain was so intense. You, just right, couldn't, right. you couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. And God showed me that my answer was on its way. He was already walking down the corridor to me. I didn't know he was on the move. Mm -hmm. But God knew. God sent him at the right time that when he got to my door, it it will lessen that his answer is always on the way right no matter how long it takes mm -hmm. uh, what the situation looks like when we pray we expect that he's going to answer and deliver mm -hmm. and completely right. redeem us the situation mm -hmm. the scripture yeah. that comes to mind when you says that when god says when you pray that we're to know that we have to request that we're asking like we when we pray something we we're not just expecting nothing to happen but we're expecting for God to hear us, to answer us, you know? Yeah. And so that, that's a good example of that. But in the midst of it, you don't feel all of that. When you're going through pain, it's like, God, where are you at? And we find, and, I, and I'm finding out, Naomi, you can say this, this is not your experience, but I'm finding out that um, there is therefore now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. And so the things that we go through in life I mean, our immediate reaction may not be the reaction that we end up with, because I used to say this, and I want to go, I want to get off track, because you have so much to say that I want to hear. But when I think of the Psalms, I think that it used to bother me years ago, well, just for a moment, when I would read through the Psalms, and I thought, David is so disrespectful, because, you know, in the beginning of some, many of the Psalms, he would say, God, where are you at? Mm -hmm. You know, and then by the end of the Psalms, he came to God's conclusion, but God didn't beat him up. Because his reaction was, what's going on here? What's happening? 
you know, in his honesty, and then God met him. And then towards the end, at the end of the Psalms, we, we, when you read through it, you see that David came to God's conclusion. And that's what it reminds me of with you. Yeah. And so even after that happened, um, I had to have antibiotics because of the bacterial meningitis. Mm -hmm. And the medicine, the antibiotic they use is so potent that oh, yeah. it causes veins to collapse. Really? And yeah, it, mm -hmm. it, it has to be dripped through so slowly because mm -hmm. it's quite painful. And so I would be hooked up to a machine for three hours of it just slowly dripping through. But my veins kept collapsing, my okay. hands, my wrists, like everywhere they put the cannula, it wouldn't last longer than a day okay. and it's a two-week um treatment so it was getting this one particular day uh they had to put a new cannula in and it was the the worst thing because they they tried putting it in my hand and they mm -hmm. and the needle actually went through or they tried in my wrist burst a blood vessel it raised up on my hand they tried it on the other side oh and i by this point i'm like i just can't deal with being poked so much mm -hmm. in a short, short space of time and at that point my older sister and my brother-in-law came in with my niece Olivia who was two and the mm -hmm. nurse was like just go just go see them spend time with them take a break mm -hmm. and we go to the courtyard of the hospital and I tell them the frustration of what's going on right. And Alex, my brother-in-law, he said, you know, this reminds me of the thorn in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And when it says in scripture, um, in my weakness, his strength is perfected. Yeah. And so I literally threw my hands up in the hospital, uh, in the courtyard and was like, it's official. I am mm -hmm. officially weak. Mm -hmm. I cannot do this anymore. I cannot in my own strength mm -hmm. do this. Right. So I'm like, okay. God is a man of his word. I've mm -hmm. said that. He knows I'm weak. Everyone else knows it. Yeah, so right. he's taken over. It's him doing it. It's his strength. Mm -hmm. So I go back into the room and it was a couple more failed attempts. But I'm like, no, I'm not going to let that change my confession. I'm not going to let that dissuade me and make me just throw everything out the window. Mm -hmm. And it it was later that night that they actually got it in in a really random awkward place i called it the miracle vein because okay. it lasted for three days mm -hmm. until the very end of my treatment okay and it was just another moment where god intervened and i learned so much about the relationship between god and his word and when mm -hmm. he says it, he means it and he came through for me yet again yeah wow yeah, definitely wow that's mm -hmm. that's fascinating. So you know we're gonna have to call for a break right here. We're probably over our break. Did you keep top tabs of the time? I tried to, but then I completely forgot when we started. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the editor will do it at the right place. Yeah. But thank you. We're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna go and then we're gonna come back because I wanna end this with the goodness of God and I wanna hear more of your testimony and what you have to say. But thank you so much for joining me from the UK. Zoom is the bomb, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Thank you. Okay. Welcome to Kingdom Kingdom Purpose TV with Manna from Heaven with your girl Sharon Gaines Lee. I am so excited you joined me. If you ha haven't been following me, this is a great time to follow. I am doing an interview with a, with a young lady from the UK. Her name is Naomi Martin. And the name of this um, broadcast is The Privilege of the Deep. The Privilege of the Deep. And the reason why she named it this week, we got together and well, actually, actually it's gonna be a book that she writes later on. But The Privilege of the Deep is because her what she went through was so deep that God had to go in deeper to bring her up out of it so that she came out of those waters um, better instead of bitter. And so her testimony is so phenomenal. It is so it will encourage you with whatever you're going through, not to give up, but to keep pressing until you can get what God wants you to have out of it. Because if we have to go through trials, listen to me, if you're going through a trial, utilize it. If you have to go through some deep waters, learn how to swim. I mean, we don't want to just waste a trial. 
You hear that? You don't want to have to waste the trial. And this young lady, Naomi Martin, she did not waste this trial. I mean, God gave to her as deep as her, her um, trial was, God went deeper and, and, and brought her up out of it better. And so that's why we're calling it the privilege of the deep, because you don't want to say you need to go through what I went through in order to have what I have. You don't want to promote that necessarily because everybody's trials are different. What you do want to promote when you're going through a trial, you can come out of it better. You can definitely come out of it better. And so that's what we're promoting here. And that's why this testimony, you listening to it, if you did not listen to the first one again, go back and listen to it. But you want to listen to these next two. And you want to bring some people with you. If you know somebody who's going through, they need healing, they need whatever trial they're going through, whether it's healing or financial or emotional, whatever it is. If it's a trial, it's a, if it's a trial, if it's a hardship for you, it's a trial. And when you're going through the trial, you need to know that God will go through it with you. Because remember, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or even um, Daniel in the lion's den, God was right there with them. He wasn't on the outside peeking in, seeing what they were doing, how they were re responding. He was right in the midst with them. And so nothing has changed. God is right in the midst of our trials with us. So we can't help but come out better. We can't help it. But our view has to be, the prism in our eyes has to be focused on the right thing, on the right, right place. Because again, we want to utilize the trial. We don't want to waste it. So let's come with me and listen to this interview. You will thoroughly be blessed. Get some tissues because you may cry. Get some pencil and paper because you may want to jot down some scriptures or some notes. But do come and join us because the time in which we live right now, we need to know what God is doing. We need to know what he's doing and how to flow with him so we can get everything that he wants us to have when we're in the midst of a trial. Because God dots every I and he crosses every T. He wastes nothing. If we're going through a trial, it had to go through the nostril of God. And he said that he wouldn't give us more than we could bear. That's amazing. Well, listen to this interview with, with, with Naomi and myself. Listen to it. Listen closely. Get your tissues, like I said. Get ready. Write down some notes because you're going to learn how to endure to the end. Come join me. Hello, thank you for joining me today on Kingdom Purpose TV. If you love this video and want to watch it again, it will be available on my YouTube channel, Divinely Design Women of Wisdom, along with my other broadcasts. So check me out on YouTube and don't forget to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe on Divinely Designed Women of Wisdom. Like and describe and subscribe, not describe. Well, if you want to describe it, maybe you can do that. But like and subscribe on my YouTube channel, Divinely Designed Women of Wisdom. Don't forget, I'll be looking for you.